All right. I'm going to discuss that in a moment with the panel, but I want to get to some other local issues as well. Let's bring the panel in. Particularly, actually, one of the issues I want to get to is this speech by the Attorney General in Sydney about religious freedom. But uh, let's get into that. Bringing in my wonderful panel right now, Rita Panahi, the wonderful Rita Panahi, and uh, Campbell Newman. Thanks very much for your time. I want to get straight into it. Rita, before we, before we get into some other issues, um, what did you make of that? I've been following the Tavistock Centre pretty closely. The, the circumstances there, there's been a raft of resignations, this, this push uh, to put kids into drug therapies uh, while they're just musing about their gender. A 400% increase in two years. Pretty extraordinary stuff. And disturbing stuff and the hostility towards anybody who questions any aspect of this, uh, whether it's the long-term impact of, of the drugs used on, on children, whether it's the enthusiasm to, to transition kids who perhaps aren't ready to make that lifelong decision, the hostility is just extraordinary. They, uh, you know, just to characterise anybody who questions this as some sort of bigot or transphobe it, it is mindless. Yeah, well, just on that point, in Victoria, Campbell Newman, Reason Party, which is the old sex party until they change their name, don't fall for it, there ain't no reason there, Fiona Patton, they'll introduce <laughs> new legislation to ban anyone debating these issues online, let alone in the media like we do here. We cop criticism for talking about these issues, but uh, it'll be silenced online if this, uh, if this bill from Fiona Patton gets her way. Marcus Evans makes the point, you know, anyone who raised concerns, this is clinicians inside a centre uh, that just deals with this issue were called transphobic. Where are we headed, Campbell? Look, look it is crazy stuff. And I can actually relate a very, uh, a very personal experience that uh, years ago when we were young parents, uh, we knew another family who had a number of kids and there was a daughter um, about the same age as our kids who absolutely rejected being female and insisted on wearing boys' clothes and wanting to be called by another name. I've got to tell you that uh, that young woman has grown up, is um, uh, very happy being uh, an attractive young woman and, and living that life, but at the time was convinced that she wanted to be a boy. Now, yeah, I've seen it firsthand. And just imagine if the parents had drunk the Kool-Aid or some social worker had intervened and sort of kept the parents at bay. Just ridiculous. So and the, the idea that, that these things shouldn't be challenged and there shouldn't be a debate is outrageous. And it clearly smacks again of other people's sort of agendas and uh, sort of the, to, to push a particular point of view and shut down debate. Right, I want to move on to some other issues. Uh, today, the Attorney General, Rita, uh, released draft legislation in relation to religious freedom. A shield, they're calling it, not a sword. So it's not a positive right to religious freedom. It's a protection for people uh, who feel their religious freedom has been negated or threatened. I have mm. to say, it won't be a popular view, that I agree with it being a shield, not a sword, uh, because I fear once you have a positive right to religious freedom that you don't have in other rights, uh, not all religions, I have to say, are, are equal and not all um, faiths or belief structures that tag themselves religion are religions either. But, Rita, what's your view? Uh, I just think whether you call it a sword or a shield, I think whatever the intention of these laws are, and they are well-intentioned, I can see them being misused. I don't think they're going to be used for the likes of Israel Folau to protect his religious freedom to say what he wants on his own Instagram page without being sacked. I think they're going to be used to uh, silence people like Sonia Kruger, who made a comment about Muslim migration and was absolutely monstered uh, for it uh, for months and months. And I just do not like any uh, laws that are almost... For, for bla blasphemy laws, I think religion is not. So, above so just on criticism. that, Rita, you would you would you wouldn't have it yet. So you're saying here, let me be really clear, that you wouldn't have any change to the current uh, state of play. I don't want to extend anti-discrimination laws that we know have been misused and uh, weaponised to try to silence people. I don't think uh, extending those laws is a positive thing. Campbell, what's your view? Because. Um, if Rita's right, Rita's in the <laughs> don't change law as it is camp, 
I'm in the, yes, you can have a bit of change, well, but I certainly don't don't line up with the Connie Ferravanti Wells who wants a really positive religious protection, which I fear could be misused. But what's your view? Look, I'm a bit of a fence sitter on this one, but I think it, better a shield than a sword. But Rita is dead right, because, uh, if, for example, you know, is someone going to argue that female genital mutilation, which is part of their religious belief, should be permitted in Australia? There'll be many arguments about religious practice that will be actually unconscionable in terms of this very open and democratic and this a society where we respect people's rights. So, you know, I think it's, it's just problematic. And I certainly don't want a religious discrimination commissioner. Haven't we got enough of these people running around with their departments and funding and having to do fact-finding missions overseas? 